Hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Fisher projections. So Fisher projections are a way of looking at a molecule in two dimensions that gives us information about how it looks in three dimensions, like a Newman projection. And so these particular types of projections, we have carbohydrate chemists to thank for. There's a whole type of chemistry that studies sugars, uh, natural sugars, unnatural sugars. And the thing about sugars is that they're very similar in their backbone, but they are different in some of their stereocenters. And so sugar chemists needed a fast way to be able to look at a molecule as it was drawn in two dimensions and tell the difference between different sugars. And so a chemist named Emile Fischer came up with this method, and it's the one that stuck. Now this is going to come back up if you take a biochemistry class. Okay, this is the most common way to show sugars, and sometimes it's used for amino acids. But it's a little strange to get used to, and so I wanted to make a video about it. So I'm going to give us a line drawing to work with. Just using traditional wedges and dashes. So let's see, we're going to be wedged OH, dashed OH, wedge OH, and another wedge. And then this is just a CH3. Now I made this model to match the model that I have in my hand so I can show you physically what this projection looks like. And so this molecule is this molecule. I have an OH projecting towards me, an OH projecting away from me, an OH coming towards me, and then another OH coming towards me. And so what a Fisher projection does is it takes this wedge and dash and it turns it on its head. And so we need to look at it from this perspective but not just from this perspective, what it really means is that everything that's not in the carbon backbone is coming directly out towards me. And so what this does is it causes the molecule to curl up, which is not surprising because most sugars are six-membered rings, and it shows me the backbone like this, okay? And so if we draw this, on two dimensions, what a Fisher projection looks like is a straight line. We put the carbon that has the highest oxidation state at the top, and then we draw parallel lines, and each parallel line represents a carbon in the chain. So for this one, I need one, two, three, four parallel lines. And then this is my CH3, okay? And so what the Fisher projection does is it looks at this and puts the substituents either on the left or the right of this line. And so if I look at this uh, model that's in my hand, I have oxygen on my right, oxygen on my right, oxygen on my right, and now oxygen on my left. And the convention has us draw in the hydrogens. Okay, so even though typically when we have just a line drawing like this, we would assume that the hydrogens are present, even though I haven't drawn them. When you draw a Fisher projection, you need to draw those hydrogens. Okay, wherever they are, you need to, to draw them out explicitly. Now I know that that's strange, and so let's watch a short video about uh, how to get from here to here, and then we'll talk about how to check your stereochemistry to make sure you always do it right. Okay, so this is the molecule that we're gonna use as our example. And the way it's oriented right now is how we're used to looking at it. Okay, so the hydrogen is coming towards me, this oxygen is going away from me. Okay, so this is all wedge and dash. And what some students mistakenly do is they just turn it on its side and they look at it just like this and would say, okay, this is on one side, these two are on the other side, this is on the same side as this one. And what you're losing when you do that 
is remembering that with a Fisher projection, it's not enough to look at it from the top. We have to rotate each of the carbons so that all the substituents are coming towards us. Okay, so these substituents are already coming towards us, but these are going away. Okay, so that is not how we would look at a Fisher projection. And so I'll turn this back the way we're used to. Let's watch the animation. The animation is going to show us what each one does. So it's going to rotate. Now both substituents are coming towards me. Rotate, so they're coming towards me. Okay, and as it lays flat, then you can see each oxygen either on the left or the right. Okay, so this is what this one looks like. I'm going to pause it real quick and show you from the side. See how all the substituents are now pointed in the same direction? Okay, this is, what, this is why it's called a bow tie, right? Because from the side, these look like little bow ties. And so in the Fisher projection, all the substituents on every carbon are pointed towards us. And now when we look at this, we can see that the first two alcohols are on the right, and the next two alcohols are on the left. Okay, and so we'll just watch as it uncoils itself. But that's what you have to do for the Fisher projection. Not just look from the top, but rotate each carbon so that it's pointed towards us. Okay, so that all of the substituents are on wedges. And then this will unfold itself back to how it started in the wedge and dash. Okay, so I've slowed this down a little bit so you can watch it a little slower. And I'm just going to let it animate back through so that you can see it a little more slowly as it unfolds the first time. Okay, so we're going to look at it so that the carbons are in a chain. We have the highest oxidation state carbon at the top. Okay, this is an aldehyde. And now it's just going to rotate each carbon so that the substituents are towards us as it unfolds that molecule and lays it flat. And that is what the Fisher projection is showing us. So hopefully that video helps you to see how we got from this wedge and dash structure to this line drawing. And so now to make sure that we've done it correctly, we're going to figure out the R and S configuration of each of the stereocenters and then match it to the, to the Fisher projection. Okay, and so remember that the Fisher projection is showing everything that's projected to the sides as being on a wedge. These are sometimes called bow tie drawings because once you draw in all these wedges, they look like little bow ties. So let's start with assigning the RNS configuration on the wedge and dash, and then I'll show you how to figure out what the RNS configuration is at the Fisher projection, and we'll just make sure they match. And so for the first center, I'll draw in my hydrogen. Okay, it's on a dash. And so if I'm assigning priority, the oxygen has the highest priority. Now I have two carbons. This carbon has essentially three bonds to oxygen, and this one only has one bond to oxygen. So this is the highest priority, or second highest, followed by this. And then hydrogen is the lowest priority. And so if I draw my arrows, it looks like it's going to the right. The lowest priority is on the dash, and so it's R. Now if I want to check that against the Fisher projection, we're going to do the same thing, okay, the same steps to figure out the R and S. If this is the carbon of interest, okay, this carbon is this carbon, then the oxygen attached to it is the highest priority. Now I have these two carbons. This carbon has three bonds to oxygen. This carbon only has one, so that's the second highest priority, followed by three, and followed by four. Now I've drawn in these wedges to remind you that our lowest priority is on a wedge. And so we need to first see what it looks like. One, two, three. It looks S, but because the lowest priority is on a wedge, we know we need to flip that stereocenter. So as it's drawn here, this is now R. Okay, R matches this. And so we've done this correctly. The first stereocenter, the oxygen is on the correct side. If we go to the next one, we have, again, the oxygen there. We have, on a wedge, a hydrogen. So the oxygen is the highest priority. This carbon is the second highest priority. This carbon is the third highest priority. And then we have the hydrogen is four. 
one, two, three. It appears to be S, but we know our highest priority is on a wedge, so we need to flip it. So this stereo center is also R. So now let's check that against this one. This carbon is this carbon. So we have an oxygen that's one. Now we have these two carbons to choose between. This carbon is, is closer to these oxygens, so that's two. This is three, and my hydrogen is four. So one, two, three. It appears to be S, but again, my lowest priority is on a wedge, and so we're gonna flip it, and this is showing R which matches, so that's great. On the next carbon, it's the same thing, okay? So oxygen is number one. Now I have to choose between these two carbons. So this carbon has an oxygen and a carbon. This one has an oxygen and a carbon. So I have to go one further out. This carbon has three hydrogens. This carbon has an oxygen and a hydrogen and a carbon. So it's the higher priority. So that gives us one, two, three, one, two, three. My other hydrogen here is dashed, so it looks R, and it is R. And we go one further down, and we see this oxygen is one, now this carbon is two, this carbon is three, one, two, three. It looks S, but that hydrogen's on a wedge, so it's R. And again, they match. Okay, so you go through this for the whole molecule, and if you find that you have a mismatch, carefully re-decide if this is R or S, and carefully reassign this as R or S, and if you're wrong, you just need to flip it. Okay, so I typically tell students while they're learning to just guess and check. So I would look at this molecule, say, I don't know if it's R or S, I don't have time to build a model, I'm just gonna guess and check. I'm gonna draw my base Fisher projection. I'm gonna put everything on one side or the other. It doesn't matter because I'm guessing. And then I would figure out the stereocenter. So I would figure this out, since it happens to be the same, I know it's R. I would see that it matched what I wanted it to be and I would leave it alone. Okay, so I would just guess at each of these positions, check the stereo center to make sure the stereo center is correct. And if it wasn't correct, like when I got here, okay, so let's do that as an example. When I got here, I would say, okay, the oxygen is number one, this carbon is number two, this carbon is number three, one, two, three. It looks S, but my hydrogen is on a wedge, and so it's actually R. And I would figure out this stereo center, one, two, three. It looks S, and it is S because the lowest priority is on a dash. And so I'd figure that out to be R and say, oh, it needs to be on the other side. And I would move the OH from the right side to the left side. When I do that, I have flipped the stereo center. Okay, that's how you show a difference in the enantiomer. And so if I take, or the stereo center, so if I take this carbon and I figure out my stereo center, one, two, three, it appears to be R, but my hydrogen is a wedge, so it's S, and now it matches my drawing. Okay, so while you're learning, try to do it perspective, okay, give your best guess based on your perspective drawing, but then you can check all the stereo centers and then you'll get it right for sure. Okay, so this takes a little bit of practice. You can re-watch that video uh, to see kind of how it's all rotating. But uh, once you do some practice and watch this tutorial a couple more times, I really hope that helps.